If you want to make a video game in Unity, this tutorial should help you learn how to work with 3D objects. In the last video, we covered how to install Unity and set up a new project. In this video, we'll create all the 3D objects needed for our game from scratch. First, let's start by adding a 3D cube to our scene to act as our ground. To do this, all we need to do is somewhere in our hierarchy, right click, scroll down here to where it says 3D object, and then we'll left click on the word cube. All that does is create a 3D game object called cube, and now you can see it here in our scene. On that cube game object, you may have noticed it also added several different components by default. Let's take a quick look at these. Now yours may already be opened up like this. You can just left click and they will all close. The first component here is the transform. This lets us change the object's position, rotation, and scale. Next, we see something called a mesh filter. This houses a mesh for any 3D shape we add to the game. You can swap this out for other shapes in Unity or even import your own 3D models from tools like Blender. We'll leave this as a cube for now. The mesh renderer lets us customize how the 3D shape will look in our scene. We won't do anything with the lighting, probes, or additional settings, but let's take a closer look at these materials. Here we can see Unity's default material has been attached to our game object. Let's go ahead and change that. To create our own new material, let's go down here into our assets, which is in the project tab, right click, go up to the word create, and then just left click on the word folder. This will create a new blank empty folder. Let's rename it to materials. Left click to select the materials folder and you can see it's currently empty. To add a new material, all we need to do is right click, go up to the word create and left click on the word material. Because this new material will be the ground and I kind of want a grass look for the bottom, let's go ahead and rename it to green. With our green material selected, you may have noticed that our inspector has changed from listing components to showing all the details for our green material. If you don't see your inspector to update to your green material, make sure this little lock icon is set to unlocked. If you left click it, it locks, left click again to unlock. Now in the materials window, you'll see a bunch of different options. This is where you can add things like textures or patterns to your material to make it look however you want. For now, we'll just change this color up here to green. To do that, just left click on this color picker. Now you can go around and try to find the green that you're looking for, and that's totally fine. But since I know the exact RGB values I wanna use, I'll go ahead and type them in down here. For red, I'll type 11, and for green, I'll type 185. Perfect. I'll go ahead and hit this X to close it. You may notice that nothing really changes in our scene just yet. To simply go back to our cube object here, go to the mesh renderer component we were looking at a second ago, and left click on this little dot icon here. If I do that, Unity is going to open up all the available materials that I can add to my cube. There's a lot in here by default that we didn't create, but if we want to find ours, we just need to go up to where the search bar is and type the word green. You'll find our green material. To apply it to our cube, simply double click. Our cube is now green. The final component we'll see here is our box collider. Once we have more objects in the game, this collider will stop things from going through it using Unity's built-in physics engine. In the last video, we did talk about all these tools. If you want to move it around, you can left click on the hand tool, left click, and you can drag it around. A quick way to move around your object without having to switch between any of these, right click to move the eye icon and rotate. Now, if you have a scroll wheel on your mouse, you can hold it down and actually grab the move tool temporarily. Once you let go, it snaps back. All the changes we're making in our scene are not being impacted on the game view at all. However, if we were to take something like our scale tool and drag it out to make it really large, you'll see on our scene view, it looks like it's going in the correct direction. What we didn't take into account was that our camera is actually right here and that's not what we want. So I'll go ahead and undo that by hitting Control Z. Now to scale correctly for the camera view, let's rotate around, I'm gonna zoom out a bit. And then now we've got our camera right in front of us here. We can kind of see where everything's aligned. I'll simply drag this to fill up the window of our game view. You may have noticed while we were scaling this, the numbers here in our transform component have been updated as well. For this game, I know I want the ground to be pretty much infinite. I don't want the player to be able to see the ends of the ground. If I scale this out, and maybe turn off aspect ratio to free, you'll see that our cube object does stop and it kind of loses that illusion of being a constant ground. So I'm gonna set this to something pretty extreme, like 50. I also wanna add a bit of height and I'll do that by hitting 50 on my Y as well. Obviously that lit up our entire screen. To pull this down, first I'm gonna zoom out by scrolling backwards on my mouse just so I can see it in the scene here. I'll go over to my move tool and I'll left click on that and I'll just start bringing it down gradually by simply 
left click and dragging it and there you go okay that looks pretty good one important thing to note for games like this this sort of 3d flappy bird that we're creating is you want all of your game objects to be on the same z-axis and the easiest way to do that is make sure everything is on the z-axis of zero right now this one's very close to zero but not quite so we'll change that by simply left clicking i'm gonna hit backspace and just hit zero I'm also going to make sure my X is on zero as well, just to make sure everything's aligned as we move forward. And I do like round numbers, so I'm going to drop this down to about 29, just to kind of smooth it over there. It looks very similar, but just a little bit further down. Perfect. That pretty much creates our ground. I'm going to snap this back to 16 by 9 ratio, and I will zoom this down just a little bit more. I'll go back to my cube and to rename this to ground. Great. Now let's add in a few more shapes to create our little bird player. To do this, we'll use the same steps we used to create our ground. So I'll right click in the hierarchy here, go down to 3D object and left click on the word sphere. It's tiny because it put the Z axis way back. To reset this transform to make everything default, all you have to do is right click and hit the word reset. Now with our 3D sphere selected here, I'm actually going to right click on it, make sure it's selected, and I'm gonna create a child object, which will be a cube. With our 3D cube selected, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here and pull it out a little bit in front of it. And I'm gonna rotate around, zoom back, just so I can see the top. I wanna to line this up, make sure everything looks good. Now we just wanna change this scale up a bit. Now we can go to our scale tool, we can try to move this around, or we can type in exact sizing. And the scale that I wanna use here is gonna be 0.5 for my X, 0.25 for Y, and 0.5 again to just create a tiny little rectangular 3D shape. Now I'm gonna to try to move this so it looks a little bit more in the right position. I'll just take my move tool and I'll push it in just a little bit, pull it up maybe. All right. Because it's getting a little bit difficult to see which shape begins and ends where, let's go ahead and create a couple more materials to add to our player character. Let's go back into our materials folder, right click, go up to create and material. Let's name this one red. So I'll create a red material for the bird's body and feel free to change the color to whatever you like best. Another way to create a new material if you just wanna do something fast instead of going through the menus is to select a current material, hit Control or Command D, and you can duplicate the material, but I'm gonna change the name to yellow, yellow. Obviously this isn't yellow, so let's go up here into our red icon and change the color to about there, should be fine. Now left click and drag this up. Perfect. Finally, we can make some little eyes by hitting right click on our sphere again and going down to 3D object and I'll take cylinder this time. So we'll create a 3D cylinder. To make this look more like an eye, I'll go into my transform component and we'll change the Z rotation to 90 degrees. Now it's at least facing the right direction, but it's obviously pretty huge still. So let's change the scale. The numbers I'll use are 0 0.4, 0 0.025, 0.4, Four, where'd it go? All right, that looks pretty good. I'll use my move tool and we'll just position this. It's not perfect, but it's close enough. Okay, now let's create a pupil. I'll just right click on the same cylinder. I'll go down to 3D object and left click on cylinder. I'm gonna pull this out just a little bit. Now, obviously we wanna change the color. Let's go ahead and create a new material. I will create a black material. Get on here, select black, and I will drag it onto my front one. Now I'll go back into it, and let's change these values really quick. I'll just simply have everything, so I'll do 0.5, so it's half, 0.5, half, 0.5, there we go, okay and it should be pretty centered already, yeah. So we just need to move it closer to our pupil, so that's good. Let's just move it back in. If you want to position your eye exactly where mine is, you can look up in the transform position values and copy those X, Y, and Z coordinates. Let's go ahead and rename these just so we don't get disorganized. I'll call this left eye. We'll call this, we'll just call it pupil call this our beak and I'll just call this our player I mean, it's a bird player we'll call it bird player to create our right eye since we've already made our left eye all we need to do is left click to highlight it and then hit control D or command if you're on a Mac and it says left eye one with that selected we can just pull it over 
to create our second little eye here. And then I'm gonna just rename this to right eye. Perfect, everything looks pretty okay. Now, if you wanna test our game at any point, all you have to do is go up here and click the play button. You'll notice my bird doesn't really do anything. It just kind of hovers in the air. To change that and apply some basic physics, all we need to do is add something called a rigid body onto our bird player. So if I left click to select bird player, I'll close these other components just to keep things organized. To add a new component, I'll simply left click on this add component button and I'll type in the word rigid body. So if I left click to add rigid body to my bird player game object and do nothing else, it now has physics applied to it. So if I left click to hit play, it'll drop and roll just like you'd expect if it had physics. Soon we're gonna be jumping into some code and adding upward force to our bird. And sometimes when you add force to a rotating object, it can cause some pretty unpredictable results. To avoid all that, we're just gonna freeze rotation so that it'll just fall and sit. To freeze rotation completely, I'll just left click X, Y, and Z. So the bird will now just fall, but not rotate at all. Boop. But before we write any code, let's create one more model. Let's create our 3D pipe. Unlike our ground and bird objects, we'll start by adding an empty game object. To create an empty game object, all I have to do is right click again in this hierarchy and scroll down to where it says the word create empty. I'll left click on that. Creating this empty game object will just give us some more control when moving or rotating the shapes we'll add as children. I'll show you more in a second. You may have noticed when we added this game object, all that it has is a transform, so you can move it around position, rotation, scale, but let's go ahead and make sure we reset that. So I'll right click, click on reset. Now within our empty game object here, let's add a new 3D cylinder. I'll right click, go down to the 3D object and left click on cylinder. I'll go ahead and rename this to top since it'll be the top of our pipe. And before I continue modeling our little pipe, let's move over this bird a bit. Ah, cool. Now all we have to do with our top game object selected is shape this into sort of what the top of a pipe looks like. To do that, I'll go over to my scale tool here. And since I already know the dimensions I want, I'll go ahead and type them in. So it's three, so be a bit wide, 0.5 to make it less high and three. Now to create the base of our pipe, we'll do the exact same thing we just did. We'll go to our empty game object here. And in fact, let's rename this now so we know what it is. It's just a pipe. I'll go up, right click and go to 3D object again. And we'll just select another cylinder and I'll call this base. And I'll go over to my scale here. Let's do 2.5, 10 and 2.5. You'll notice that it's all centered right now as well. And all we have to do to get this down is to drag it to smooth it out over here. Let me do just negative 10 looks great. That's gonna do everything we need it to do. I want it to extend well beyond our ground because we're gonna actually be spawning these pipes in and I don't want the bottom to ever show on the camera, regardless of how tall or how wide a person's monitor might be. Finally, let's just create one more material so that we have our pipes be a bit darker green color. I'll go in here to my green, duplicate it, and I'll just call it dark green. Now with my dark green material selected, I will go into my color picker here and I will type in the RGB values that I need. Four for red and 60 for green, so let's close that. Now with our dark green material, I'll drag that onto my pipe, both the base and the top. Great, all that's left to do now before we hop into some code is change our background color. To do this, let's go to the main camera object here that Unity put in by default. And over in the inspector, if we look at our camera component, let's switch where it says skybox to solid color. Simply left click on that dropdown. You may notice our scene looks completely the same, but now in our camera view or what the player will actually see, it's a complete solid black background color. Now to change this to the color we wanna use, all we have to do is left click on our color picker here and either type in our RGB values or select the color. For red, I left it at zero. For green, I did 173. And for blue, I used 255. Finally, we can left click our play button here to test our game out. Boom. Perfect. Now that all our 3D objects and materials are set up, we're ready to add some life to our game. In the next video, we'll write a few lines of code to get our player moving. Please leave any comments or questions in the section below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.